I think Russia's main objective is to essentially uh, present it, be able to present itself later as a, um, a kind of power broker, if you like, um, or a peace broker, you know. So Russia, at the same time as um, essentially backing um, or prosecuting a war there, um, will later on be able to help negotiate the peace and then to help um, to decide, you know, which figures should be in any transitional government, for example. I mean, the aim is essentially to bolster Assad's government um, to avoid regime change of the type that Russia saw in Libya and which was very much uh, not to its liking. Um, so, but in the longer term, not necessarily to keep Assad in place, but the idea being that Russia would have a say in what happens. I think the conflict in Syria plays into a narrative that's been developing over several years now, which is the narrative of Russia versus the West, mainly versus the US, and Russia being a, becoming a great power once more. Um, and so I think in a weird kind of way, people are prepared to make some sacrifices for that. Um, the people who are not prepared to accept that economic hardship, if you like, are the ones who are leaving the country. Um, but there were some uh, surveys carried out by Levada recently which showed um, that Russians are generally quite supportive um, of policy in Ukraine, even though at the beginning they were not so supportive or were kind of uninterested. Um, and I think the same pattern might happen again in Syria. Um, that people are not necessarily fervently patriotic about it to the extent that they would like to see Russian boots on the ground there, certainly not. Um, but at the same time, they might see it through the prism of kind of, you know, Russia versus the West. And obviously, if you look at the sanctions, you know, that's generally the trend that one sees whenever sanctions are imposed. Um, you know, this is what happened um, in many other countries as well, where sanctions have been, have been imposed, but you get that rally around the flag effect. So economic deprivation and so on isn't necessarily also seen as being a product of their own government's policy, but a product actually of you know, the global community or whoever it is that's imposed the sanctions on the population rather than their own government.